Hi everyone, Rachel Prophet here. I'm a white female with reddish brown hair that's up today. My pronouns are she, her. Today I'm wearing a red and gray baseball tee that has a Colorado apple on it from Climhard Cider. I'm in my office as usual with my epic sticker wall behind me. And for today's getting started video, I wanna to talk to you about number sequences. So I'm here in Dynamics 365. What I'm gonna do is go into that Legal Entities page and we are going to take a quick look at uh, the legal entity that we created. Now you might remember we put in some basic information and one of the tabs down here uh, that we talked about very briefly was the number sequences. You'll notice that all of these number sequences are blank and if I use the drop down box here, I can manually select a number sequence. Now you'll notice that I don't have any number sequences, therefore I need to go create some. So what I'm gonna do is switch over to the number sequences form, which you'll find in the organization administration module. Now the easiest way to generate or create number sequences for your uh, new legal entity is by using the generate button here in the upper left hand corner. When you click this generate button, it's gonna um, go through a process and create all of the necessary uh, number sequences for your legal entity. This can be a time consuming process, so I'm gonna go take a quick break and come back when it's done. Okay, so now the wizard has opened. So I'm going to go ahead and click on next. And I can see all of the various different number sequences that are going to be created. If you don't want a particular number sequence to be created, you can simply select that record and delete it. However, I'm going to keep the defaults here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next. I can see exactly how many number sequences are going to be created in each of these different areas. And when I'm ready, I click finish. Again, this process can take a few minutes depending on how many legal entities and how many number sequences you're creating. So we'll come back in just a moment when it's done. So once that wizard is done executing, it's gonna return you back to that number sequences form. When you look at the list, it's really hard to tell if anything happened in this list. So what I'm gonna do is navigate back to the legal entities page and show you what has now happened. So I'm on my Dynamics 365 Unbox Legal Entity, and you can see now that all of these number sequences have been populated for the system ID and so on. Additionally, if I were to navigate into the various module parameters, for my example, I'm gonna use accounts payable parameters and go into the number sequences tab on this page, that's at the bottom there, you can see that number sequences have been populated for each one of these different numbers. So number sequences in a nutshell are a number that's automatically assigned in a sequential fashion when you create different types of records. So when I'm looking in accounts payable here and I see vendor account, the number sequence here called ACCO underscore 16561 is what will be used for generating the vendor account number. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this hyperlink to open up the details of this number sequence. Now that I'm in the number sequences form, you can see the details of how this is being formatted. You might wanna consider updating these so that they have better names. So this is my unboxed vendor account number so I can update that name so it's more easily understandable. You can see on my scope parameters tab that it has defined a company scope and it's linked it to the UNBX or my Dynamics 365 unboxed company. The format for this number sequence is set to UNBX dash followed by six numbers. This is configured in the segments pane. Now, if I don't want the company code to be a part of my number sequence, I can actually remove this. And perhaps I don't want the dash either, but maybe I want all of my vendor accounts to start with a V instead. I can type the V in there. If I also want my vendor account numbers to be larger than six digits, I can add additional pound signs 
to the end here. So I've added two more pound signs and you can see the length is now eight. And when I tab off of that field, that format is updated. The references tab is telling me where this number sequence is being used. And the general tab defines the behavior of this number sequence. Now, because I updated the length of my number sequence, I'm going to want to update the largest number as well. So I'm going to add two nines in there, which will allow my number sequence to grow to an eight digit number. Now, sometimes when you're creating a number sequence, you don't want to start at one. You can also set the next number. We also have additional parameters here that allow us to change kind of how it's being used. Right now, you can see it's not in use. You also have the ability to stop a number sequence. So if you no longer want to use a particular number sequence, you can mark this stop checkbox. The manual checkbox allows us to let this number sequence be updated manually. So instead of the numbers being assigned automatically and following this format, if I mark the manual checkbox, this allows me to put any value I want in. Now the continuous checkbox means that your numbering sequence is gonna be continuous and there's gonna be no gaps in the number. We don't recommend that you mark this checkbox unless there's an actual business requirement to have no gaps in the number sequence. This is typically used with voucher numbers. There is a parameter in general ledger parameters page that uh, you can set to require your number sequences for vouchers to be continuous. This is a pretty common requirement in a lot of countries from an audit perspective. You can also use these checkboxes on the right hand side to allow a user to manually change the number to a lower or a higher number. There's also a tab down here on the bottom for pre-allocation. Pre-allocation is useful when a number sequence is used very frequently, especially if you're using it in an integration or a lot of users could be generating numbers or that use that particular number sequences. Vendors are maybe not necessarily a great example, but a sales order or a purchase order might be. This pre-creates those in memory so that when a user creates a new uh, record that is leveraging that number sequence, it will automatically uh, select those. So this is used for performance and you can see from the notes here that you cannot use the pre-allocation uh, process if you're using a continuous number sequence. By default, you can see it's set this to 10. That's fine. I'm not going to make any changes there. When you're finished making changes, you can close the screen down. Instead of closing the screen down, I'm going to very quickly create a new number sequence manually. You can do this by clicking on the new button in the screen, which will open up a blank record for you to start putting in some details. Uh, for this example, I'm going to go ahead and create a new number sequence that will be used with a voucher. So I'm going to call this the GL Journal Voucher. Um, and I'll give it a name. In my scope parameters, I can select where this number sequence will be used. You can also choose options like company, legal entity, operating unit, company and fiscal calendar, legal entity and fiscal calendar, or an operating unit type. For my example, I'm actually going to select company and fiscal calendar. When you do this, you'll need to select the company that you are going to create this for. So I'm going to choose the unboxing company, and then you're going to select the fiscal calendar that you want. I'm going to choose the shared fiscal calendar that has been set up out here, which is just called fiscal year. If I don't want one of these segments or I want to change the segments around, I can move the segments up and down. And uh, if I want to add another constant, so let's say, for example, um, I want to, you know, put a V on here so that I know that this is a voucher um, and maybe I don't want the company. I'll remove the company and add another segment here and choose that I want a constant. And then I'm going to put a V in here for voucher. So now you can see my format is open dash V with the six numbers. I technically could have put the V here as well, 
and remove this so I just have three rows and that has the same effect as two rows with a dash and a V. Obviously you can rearrange those rows and you can see what your total length is. Right now there's no references. If you want to manually add a reference you can do that but vouchers are typically assigned in a journal name. So I'm not going to add a reference and I'm going to select the continuous checkbox here and you'll notice that when you mark the continuous checkbox a new tab for automatic cleanup shows up. By default, this will turn on and the automatic cleanup is set to 24 hours. I recommend you keep the default here. In some cases, you might need to do that cleanup more frequently. And there are buttons at the top of the page that you can do a manual cleanup if you uh, need to clean that number sequence up more frequently. The basic premise of a cleanup is that um, if somebody starts a record and let's say uses voucher number 003 and then we go on and we use number 4 but later I go back and I delete voucher number 3 from my journal and I don't use it, instead of 003 being an unused number, when I run the cleanup routine the system will say oh number 3 was deleted and now the next time I create a new voucher it will go back and use number 3 but because 4 was already used the next one I would, would create would go to number 5. So it makes sure that there's never any gaps and this is common with vouchers and you might be adding and deleting rows in your journals but it makes sure that all of the numbers are used in that particular number sequence and the cleanup routine is what allows those deleted values to be reused. Once you're done creating a number sequence, you can then go specify that number sequence in either a parameters form or in a journal name. So that's it for today's getting started video. I hope you enjoyed it. A uh, little bit longer than my usual video. If you've got something specific you want to hear about or you've got questions about number sequences, reach out and put your comments below. And as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Dynamics 365 Unboxed.